This lesson deals with Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits with dependent sources. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in Chapter 4 starting on page 15. Superposition and proportionality still hold because as we have seen in our last examples, the dependent sources don't remain in the column of independent sources. Thevenin and Norton's theorems are based on superposition, so they're also true. We're going to have to find though the open circuit voltage or the short circuit current, including the effects of the dependent sources. The Thevenin and Norton resistance will have to be found by applying a test voltage and finding the response current when all the independent sources set equal to zero, as we've indicated in the proof. Series and parallel reduction techniques only work if we have no sources. Let's take a look at an example. Let's find the Thevenin equivalent circuit for this combination of an independent source, a resistance, and a dependent source. Remove the load and find the open circuit voltage. Since I have an open circuit here and an open circuit here, there's no current going this way and no current going this way, and so therefore there's no current going this way. The voltage across here is equal to this drop plus this drop. Since I have no current, then the voltage across here is zero. So this voltage is now the same as this voltage, which is our open circuit voltage or Thevenin voltage. So I have V Thevenin in terms of mu V sub X. But what is V sub X? It's the controlling variable back here. It's this node voltage minus this node voltage. So that's V sub S minus V Thevenin. Let's put that over here now. Right, now I've got V Thevenin on this side of the equation and also on this side of the equation. So let's multiply it by mu and bring it on the other side of the equation. So V Thevenin and then mu V Thevenin is equal to mu V sub S. So the voltage V Thevenin is equal to mu divided by one plus mu times V sub S. Again, we're considering that we know the resistance value we know the input voltage and we know our controlled source gain constant of mu. So I can then find the Thevenin voltage in terms of these symbolically, or if I had values, I could plug the values in. Now let's find the Thevenin resistance. We'll set all the independent sources equal to zero. So a voltage source is a short, a current source would be an open. This would be an independent source. But I do have a dependent source here. So I can't treat this like a resistance. So I have to apply a voltage and measure a current, or I could apply a current and calculate the voltage but the ratio of this voltage to this current is the resistance looking in. Since I have an open circuit here, the current I test all goes this way. I can write my loop equation here. The rise in voltage is V test, the drop is R0 times I test plus mu times V sub X. So I have the voltage V test in terms of I test, but also in terms of another unknown. I need to express V sub X in terms of either V test or I test. Let's go find what V sub X is. It's the controlling voltage. It's this node voltage, which is zero, minus this node voltage, which is V test. So a negative V test. I'll put that in over here as minus V test. And I'll bring this on the other side of the equation. Say so V test plus mu V test is equal to R zero times I test. So I'll bring the I test over here and bring the one plus mu over here. So that's my Thevenin resistance. It's R zero over one plus mu. So my model is having the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance. Now I can hook up my load and solve for whatever parameters I'm interested in. The interesting thing to note here is the value of mu. It's actually going to be the gain of a voltage amplifier. We'll talk about this in the next section, but it's possible to get very, very large values of mu by putting lots of transistors together. Suppose that mu approaches infinity. V Thevenin becomes just a large number over one plus a large number. It just approaches V sub S. But more interesting, what happens to this resistance here? The Thevenin resistance becomes R0 divided by a huge number, and so it approaches zero. We had talked about the maximum efficiency theorem in the last chapter, and this is the condition that we were shooting for in getting the most efficient circuit we could get. Because of this controlled source, I'm able to lower this resistance significantly if mu is large. And if it were infinite, then we just go to zero. When we're talking about finding the Thevenin resistance, we also found that there was another way of finding this by taking the ratio of the Thevenin voltage to the short circuit current. Let's find the short circuit current. So I'm going to take over here on my terminals A and B and short them, and I'm going to find the current in the short circuit. I have a short circuit over here. I'm going to force this voltage across the resistance. So this terminal will be the minus, and this will be the plus. If you go around the loop here, the rising voltage would equal the drop. The short circuit over here, V sub X is equal to this node voltage, which is V sub S minus zero. So V sub X is equal to V sub S. Now the current that flows in this resistance can't go this way, it can only go back to the short circuit. 
So the voltage across here is mu V sub X and the resistances are zero. So this current is the short circuit current. And now I know that V of X is equal to V of S. Our Thevenin resistance is the Thevenin voltage from our last calculation, mu over one plus mu times V sub S. And now our short circuit current, the V sub S is cancel. The mu's cancel. And I wind up getting our zero in the numerator over one plus mu. This is the same result we had on the last page. Sometimes this is a lot easier to calculate because putting short circuits in and open circuits in, you eliminate some of the terms in your equation. In this case, we're forcing this current to go in this direction, forcing this voltage across here. And sometimes this is a quicker way of finding the Thevenin resistance, especially in what we call active circuits. And this is an example of a Thevenin equivalent circuit with a dependent source.